So welcome back to Aquadu, and here we are at the very last part of our um, series on making this game. And we're on task eight, and we're going to develop the part of the program that checks if a player has won the game after each move. Um, a player has won if both of their pieces are on the finish. When a player wins, an appropriate message should uh, that includes the player's name should be displayed. The program should then return to the main menu. If the game's not been won, then it becomes the other player's turn, and tasks four to eight should be repeated until one of the players has won the game. So let's go back to Replit and let's create a new uh, procedure called check winner. Okay, and it's going to return true or false depending on whether they've won or not. So def uh, check winner. And we're going to make use of our uh, player turn. So we'll just say if um, player turn. Well, actually, do I need that? No, I don't think I do. I think I can simply say if p1 counter 1 equals 11 and p1 counter 2 equals 11, then return true. Um, but I can do a little nifty or in here as well, can't I? I suppose it's, it's going to be cle clearer if I don't. I'll just do, um, okay, or if uh, P2 counter 1 equals 11 and P2 counter 2 equals 11, return true as well. Otherwise, return uh, false. Okay? So notice I don't need to use else here because as soon as I return it stops my program running so if it returns true it will never get to the point of returning false so check winner simply looks at the current assignment of all the um, or alignment of all of the counters and says if they're if if a single players both of a single players counters are on 11 then we return true there is a winner um, and uh, we do this we do the same test but for player two and if neither of those return true then we return false so what I'm going to do is now, before I change turn each time, I'm going to do a uh, little test. I'm going to just say, okay, I'm going to move. Actually, I can put it in here. If the player can make a move, we move their piece, and we will check if they've won. So let's do game one. Uh, sorry, if... Um, if uh, check winner is equal to true. So if someone's won, let's break this out a bit. If one of the players wins, then we need to print a little message, don't we? Um, so why don't we use our colors for this, actually, because it's a nice thing to do. So I'm going to go all the way up to find my colors. It's set color, and these are the colors I can use, red, blue, green, yellow. Let's use a nice bright yellow. So I'm going to set color yellow. So let's do that. Let's say set color yellow. And let's print. Um, and we need to print who's the, uh, but it's it's still the turn of the current player. So I can use current player name in there. So I'm going to use um, placeholder. So-and-so uh, wins. <laughs> That'll do. Um, Congratulations, and um, quite then a boring uh, input. Press enter to return to the main menu. Okay, uh, we can dress this up a little bit, put some stars there or something, make it look nice. And actually, I forgot to put my format, so now I'm going to format that string, and I need to put in the name of the current player name. Remember from a few videos ago that current player name is um, a global variable and it gets set every time uh, when we um, change turns. So that's going to print the name of the current player name. So it's going to say current player name wins, congratulations. Press enter to return to the main menu. So that only happens if the, um, oh and I might want to reset uh, the color before I do that. So that only happens if they have won. If they've not won, then the game will just continue and it will change turn and so on. But if they have won, 
then it will currently, if I press enter, it will actually just go down to here, change turn and run the while loop again. So I need to set game one to true before I do that. So if they've won, game one is equal to true. Uh, change color to yellow, tell them that they've won, and then tell them they need to press enter to, to do the main menu. Now when they press enter, execution will pause here until they do. When they press enter, it will continue. It'll go down here. It won't run that else because they were able to make a legal move. It will change turn, but that doesn't really matter because um, when it comes around here again, it won't... Uh, it won't run the while loop again because game one will now be true. I'm just thinking though that it won't show the board and you'll never see the satisfaction of seeing your winning board. So why don't we show the board um, one more time before we show the congratulations message. So they make their move, we update the board and then we tell them congratulations you've won. That, my friends, should do it. Let's press run and try a game all the way through. So I'm gonna put in some player names this time. Dave and Jane are gonna play, and we're gonna play the game. And we start off and it's Dave's turn. So Dave's gonna roll the die. He's got a four. There's no legal move, so press enter to change turns. Bummer. Okay, Jane's turn. Press enter to roll the die. She's rolled a two, she's gonna move piece A. Uh, oh, I press S, I got the wrong one. Let me do that again, A. There we go, we've moved. Lovely. Right, it's Dave's turn. Let's see if he gets some more luck. Oh, he's rolled a two. Fantastic. So whichever one he moves, he'll knock Jane back to the start. So let's see. Let's press A. And, oh, Jane's gone back to the start. Jane's turn. She gets a three. Okay, she's going to bring A forward. Uh, Dave's turn. He's rolled a two. Okay. He can't move B. I'll try it, but it'll say he can't. Yep, perfect. So he's got to move A. So let's move A up. And let's see what happens now. It's Jane's turn. Uh, let's roll the die. And she's got a one, so let's start. Let's put her A into the safe space. Dave's turn. He rolls a four. He has to move piece one, which means he has to knock Jane back to the start. Jane's turn. She rolls a one. Okay, piece B. Back. Okay, Dave's turn. Come on, Dave. Let's get there. Roll. He rolls a two, let's move piece B. I bet you this isn't gonna work because I haven't coded for what happens if a value goes above 11, so it's not actually gonna end. It's gone off the board, it's not showing it. Oh my goodness, I've got a bug after all that. I've got a bug. I've got a bug, my bug is this. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay, my bug is this, under move piece. If you move a piece forward, okay, and that piece then goes over 11 or goes off the board, we need to reset it back to 11. Oh, boy. So let's just put that code in. If P1 counter 1 is greater than 11, then P1 counter 1 becomes equal to 11. You have to move it. I can't believe I left that out. We've got to do that for piece B. So if if, uh, if count two goes above eleven, set count two back, and let's do the same for player two. So if player two counter one uh, goes above eleven, set it back to eleven, and if player two count two goes above eleven, set it back to eleven. And the reason for that is because the rules say that if you roll more than needed to get to eleven, that's okay. Uh, you just stop at the finish line. We've got to test it again. Aren't you pleased I've cut a lot of this out for you guys? I've been doing this for ages. Right, let's try again. I'm gonna put Dave, Jane, we're gonna play. Let's get on with it, Dave's turn. Oops. Okay, so Jane's got to the finish and uh, Dave is not far behind, Dave's turn. Enter to roll the die. Dave rolls a two, let's move him up nearer the finish. Jane's turn, Jane rolls a one, let's bring our second piece up. Dave's turn. Dave rolls a two. Let's just get him into the finish. And my code has worked. He was on 10. He rolled a two. 
It should have gone up to 12 and therefore not shown on the board, but it has capped at 11. That's good. It's working. Right. Jane. Dave rolls a 2. Let's move piece B up. Jane rolls a 1. Let's move piece B up. If Dave now rolls a 1, 2 or 3, then we should have a winner. He rolls a 4. Can you believe it? Okay, let's move. Oh my goodness, piece B back 1. <laughs> and it's Jane's turn. Jane rolls a 1. Let's move piece B up. Right, Dave, come on. Dave rolls a 3. Okay, here we go. We should see a win now, people. So I'm going to move piece B up to the finish. Here we go. A and B for player one are both in the finish. Dave wins. Congratulations. Press enter to return to the main menu. Ooh. Now, I've just realised something. If we were to start a new game, I think they'll all be at the end again. <laughs> they are. The reason for that, people, is quite simply that when we start a new game, we have to make sure we reset these values. So let's just copy those and let's just put that into a little function called reset. Um, reset the board. Def reset board. Let's make sure we've said we're using those globals. Global P1C1, P1C2, P2C1, P to C2 and those should then get reset and we're going to set, oh yes, player turn that's global and current player name is global as well. So we're going to reset the board setting all those values. So when we play the game, right at the start before we do anything else we just reset the board okay, we're going to reset the board so that if we play another game it um, goes right back to um, everyone's at the start again. So that is it. We've played the, we've coded up the game and we've tested the game. And when we tested, we discovered we had some faults and some problems. And hopefully if you followed my code along, then you'll have had the same problems and you'll have had to do the same fixes because the best part of programming is that we learn the most when we make mistakes and we go back and we do fixes. We learn tons that way. So actually, every time I've made a mistake, I've given you a valuable learning opportunity. Anyway, we are basically done here. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed following this along. And I know that it's been difficult at times because we've done some pretty complex coding. We've done a lot of, uh, we've done um, a few little neat tricks along the way. And we've had to think very, very um, clearly, very logically. And we've had to break the program down to essential elements. But the nice thing is, the way we've used subroutines means our program has broken up into meaningful, individually testable little units. And if I just minimize them all, and we're, oh, land this one as well, the check counter can move, and change turn, we just make all of those nice and small, set player names and everything else, I mean, then we can look at our code as being quite a simple thing. We run our whole program by calling main menu. Main menu asks you what you want to do and if you choose one you can set the player names or two you play the game. If you choose two to play the game it runs this routine. We reset the board. We determine that the game has not been won yet. While the game has not been won we show the board, we roll the die. We check if a player can move based on that die roll. If they can move then we move a piece. If then um, we check if there's a winner, and if there is a winner, then we set game one to true, which means that the loop will no longer run. We show the board again to show the winner uh, their, their pieces, and we tell them that they've won. And that's it. Uh, but if, while the game's going, if we check that they can make a move, and if for some reason the current state of play means they can't make a move based on that die roll, we just say, you can't make a move, sorry press enter to change turns and it goes round and it keeps going round in a loop until um, we've won. And this is one of the points that I really want you to get across. We've abstracted all of the detail. We've taken the detail out. The play game routine is really simple. Reset the board while the game's not over. Show the board, roll the die, check if you can move, move. Check if there's a winner, 
repeat, repeat, repeat until there is a winner. That's all the play game routine does. And any one of those individual parts is actually relatively simple too. Even show board's not that hard. Rolling the die is easy. Checking if the player can move is quite straightforward logically. Moving the piece is quite complex um, because it makes use of some other functions along the way. Um, but that helps break it down. It says, can you move? So then you go and check with the can you move one. And, and it uses those different subroutines. And the whole point of that is it means that no single part becomes really unmanageable and really difficult. You can imagine if we built the whole game just in one while loop without any subroutines, this would be an incredibly long and incredibly difficult to understand um, program. But as it is, we've made our game in 444 lines of code and actually... There's no single part of it that you can't understand if you just put your mind into it. So if you've managed to achieve this, then well done. You've done a really decent effort, a really good bit of programming. I'm very impressed and I hope that you've enjoyed making it. And more importantly, I hope that you enjoy playing Aquidy um, with whoever you can persuade to play with you. I hope you feel proud when you see your game running and working. You should do. It's a real milestone making your first complex game work in Python programming. Well done. Enjoy the moment. And I can't wait to see what you come up with next.